Um, I feel like the overall theme is um, investing in yourself, okay? Accumulating more skills, really taking the time to make a, a long-term investment. So possibly having to do things the traditional way. If in the past you felt like, okay, I could cut corners or I'm going to do this because it gives me the most financial windfall. This is the month where you start to realize that cutting corners or, you know, trying to trying so hard to get ahead. I feel like you might have realized it's a temporary gain is not sustainable or viable long term and it's not going to bring that stability that you're hoping for long term. I see many of you are kind of rethinking this idea about I need to better myself. I need to make better investments in myself and so these investments you know as with all investments they do take a long time to pan out they do take a long time to come to fruition but i feel like you're deliberate with your decision and you have a better sense of what to do moving forward i see a lot of people contemplating returning back to school um, first of all for the financial assistance but also as a investment in yourself because you are realizing that the job market has been very fierce, very competitive, and without the proper credentials under your belt, even if you have the work experience and the skills, without the proper um, credentials under your belt, it's gonna be very hard for you to rise from your current position or within your current rank. And so having that, I guess, realization where I need to kind of slow down and I need to really make smarter decisions about, you know, investing my, in my education, in myself, that's going to be very crucial to get you to the next phase in your professional life. I'm also feeling for many of you, um, you know, work and jobs and careers and professions, all of these things are available for you, but there is this kind of... Um, feeling very, very stuck because of family constraints and family obligations, okay? You might be helping out family members who start a business and geographically, um, you, you stay there and you tell yourself, I'm going to stay there for a specific period of time, let's say two, three years. And then after that, I have to get my life started and things start getting too comfortable, right? Things start getting too comfortable and then your own plans kind of get derailed. And then the need within the family um, becomes too great. It is a huge burden. I see a lot of young parents out there trying to make ends meet. I'm also seeing people helping family members to make ends meet. I'm also seeing some people um, having this sense of loyalty to elderly parents and trying to stay in the geographical area to help out elderly parents as well. And these are great, amazing, noble deeds that you're doing but you also need to think about long term how can you best you know help them and i feel like the question then bounces back to how can you best um cultivate your skills how can you best invest in yourself so then these future goals and these things that you feel currently are out of reach so that you keep delaying them you know th they become attainable so finding a way to make these investments in ourselves for this month is going to be crucial it's okay to be selfish it's okay if you feel like what I'm doing is out of selfishness. I, I don't feel that's the case. And I feel like we have to have a better holistic understanding of where we stand in relations to other people. And we are not in a position to help somebody if we're dissatisfied, if we're unhappy, and if we're not living up to our potential. Okay. So there are a lot of things that you've been kind of thinking about for a really long time and I feel like you're really not making a move you're trying to assess do I have enough money am I gonna be okay and all these questions are normal they're human questions you know for survival for having your basic bare necessities met and I feel like you're waiting waiting biding your time and nothing is really happening the movement is not happening from your end and so right now, aim to make that huge leap or that huge investment in yourself so that two, three years down the line, you're exactly where you want to be, okay? It's a slow process. There are no shortcuts here. And if you were to, you know, kind of just embrace that energy and just accept it so that you can start moving in the right direction, I feel like that's a very pivotal first step. Um... 
moving far away, if you are planning a move, it's going to be really good. It's going to be very, very good. It's going to open up your world. It's going to give you, you know, new contacts and it's going to allow you to be kind of like freed from the constraints of obligation. Okay. A lot of these obligations, I feel like they're self-imposed mainly because you do have strong emotional attachments to things. You have a big sense of responsibilities. And so I feel moving into, well, actually through October and now moving into November, you're kind of like working at cross purposes with yourself, pulled in two directions, stretched thin, and then also pulled in two directions. On the one hand, it's like emotionally what you want. And then on the other hand is obligation. And I'm not going to lie. I feel like some of these obligations were a result of bad decisions. I'm not going to lie about that. I feel like, you know, the past three years were very brutal. I do feel some of you have lingering health issues that you need to take care of. And um, you've kind of been sweeping them under the rug and they're exacerbating. I'm also sensing as well um, decisions when it comes to, you know, getting involved with the wrong people that came through as well. And then it created a uh, series of other little problems that you need to, you know, that, that are kind of um, uh, nibbing away at your, nibbling away at your, your goals and your ideals and the things that you want out of life. And so let's redirect our energy for this month to be a little bit more um, sure and I want to say focus on what we need to do, okay? Because I, I keep seeing you guys kind of like stretch like a rubber band. You're trying to cover all bases. You're trying to take care of other people too. And um, you need to start to take care of yourself, okay? You're not going to be of service to other people if you're dissatisfied, unhappy, uh, unhealthy even, emotionally or physically. So it, it's really time to kind of like face our demons head on, look at ourselves in the mirror and just, you know, really look at some areas that we need to fix so that we can get to a place where we can be successful, proud of our achievements and proud of our professional as well as um, financial foundation, okay? So, first of all, let me talk about this. This is your energy here, coming out in the reverse position. This is somebody who loves too much. This is somebody who has trouble saying no. And this is someone who wants to take care of other people. It's like the mother hen. Someone who's very, very emotionally, like, nurturing, caring, has a really, really good heart and has a strong sense of loyalty. So for example, I see this as somebody who's willing to forgive an ex-partner, even though the ex-partner did horrible things to them. Okay. It's somebody who sees both sides of the story and can sometimes be a little bit naive. When it shows up in the reverse position, I do feel that despite all of these emotional hangups, many of you are still very strong, very resilient, and re very ready to take people back, to forgive, forget, and let bygones be bygones, and still willing to work things out, negotiate with another person, and, you know, trying to reach a satisfying decision, not only for yourself, but because you care so much about other people, I feel like you're, you don't mind taking a smaller slice of the pie if it makes the other person happy or if it appeases the other person. So please be very careful about not shortchanging yourself just to please others, okay? I feel that we're, we, we've gone through a major phase here where you are learning from the past and you're learning about, you know, things that you shouldn't repeat moving forward into the future. So I'm getting a big energy here about lessons learned, about, you know, being a lot more emotionally grounded, about making decisions, not only with your head, but a little bit more with your heart. I'm sorry, not only with your heart, but a little bit more with your head so that you're guided in the right direction. So if you've been kind of fumbling around, you know, feeling like, oh, I should do this because it's it's good for the other person. Don't think about the other person. It's the month for you to start to really think about what you want, what you need, where you need to go and what you need to do to get there. So you're kind of turning your back on a few decisions that have not really worked out for you or that left you feeling like you're being shortchanged or that left you feeling like you deserve more. So 
it's a long process for you guys to get here, but I feel like this is the month where it's it's almost like enough's enough. I need to be smarter about this. I need to take care of myself. So the second card coming through in the picture is the um, Six of Wands. The Six of Wands, this is a card about being a leader in your own right, having a wide following, having people kind of... Um, you know, um, they're, they're like hanging on your every words, your actions, your words are being noticed and you're being groomed for a position of success. Some of you might be working in a very high power, um, in a very public type of a capacity where what you say has a lot of sway, has a lot of influence over how things, policies I'm sensing, how things are being uh, carried out. Some of you have a lot of sway, a huge following. So you might, you know, be um, be in social media. You might have a wide, you know, following. You have might have people that um, consult you because they trust your experience. They trust your expertise. They trust your knowledge. So this is a really good place to be. And I'm sensing as well. This is a situation where you made conscious decisions to kind of like um, they I'm, I'm seeing this kind of like going under the radar so you might have I, I don't want to say compromise because I feel like this is a, a deliberate strategic attempt in order to get ahead in life so you might have to work with people that you don't really like you don't really agree with but you're at a point where you have wisdom and fortitude so you know how to navigate that you know office politics you know how to navigate even the politics of your work environment so that you're able to get ahead without burning bridges without you know telling some people i don't agree with you and i'm going to do things differently so i feel like you're kind of like that social chameleon that slides under and then comes out ahead and in the process of doing that i don't feel you're selling yourself out i don't feel you're selling yourself short i feel that it is a deliberate strategic attempt from your end to be as cooperative as possible, to be as um, to be as able to coordinate with other people, and to be able to kind of like put yourself in other people's shoes, so that you're you can see things from their point of view, so that you can you know make sure that the plans that is implemented takes into account what you want as well as what other people want. So for those of you who are operating on the positive side of this, you've already made it. You've already at a point where professionally things are really good. You're in the public limelight. You might have, um, a, like I mentioned, fame, fortune associated with the work that you're doing. And now you're at a point where you're thinking about definitely giving back. You're thinking about as well, what is my next step? Am I happy being in this tenuous situation where I have to, you know, play politics and really watch what I say, really watch what I do, because with fame, there comes a lot of scrutiny. So people might, you know, watch your every move. They might report on everything that you're doing. So you might not have the freedom to go out and do things covertly. I feel like there is an energy here about having to hide, you know, your true beliefs, having to hide who you associate with and having to it's it's almost like the spotlight being shown on you and so you're really really careful about crafting and creating this public persona so that it fits the mold rather than you know being true to who you really are and i don't feel this is a difficult process i feel like you're very good at it you're very good at it and i'm i don't feel like it's a bad thing because you know how to work the system okay but at the same time I feel like further down the line, you know, let's say if you're projecting a few years into the, the future, is this okay with me? Can I kind of like uh, de-emphasize that part of myself in order to get ahead? And I feel like this is where the decision is coming in. Because yes, on the one hand, there's a lot of fame, there's a lot of fortune, there's a lot of wide following. But on the other hand, are you emotionally true to yourself? And are you emotionally happy? Are you able to do things kind of like out of the darkness of the night or, you know, in clear view without feeling guilt, without feeling shame? Or are you still kind of succumbing to this social expectations or professional expectations and doing things very much by the book, but is not bringing you that emotional satisfaction? OK, so I feel some of you are dealing with this who have really made great strides in your professional life. And then for others of you. 
for others of you. This is where the reading kind of splits up. We're at this state where emotionally finances are really, really bringing us down. Okay, this is like juggling two jobs, juggling two responsibilities, having a lot of obligations kind of imposed upon you where you're unable to keep things afloat or you're unable to kind of maneuver. I want to say you're, first of all, not grounded enough. You're kind of wobbly. And then all the responsibilities that are piled on top of you, it can feel very, very restrictive and it can feel very oppressive. And I do feel taking on the burdens of other people. Um, I'm also sensing as well um, family, family burdens. OK, I'm, I'm feeling there is somebody in your family. A mother figure possibly or even a father figure because I, I feel like this is a masculine energy here the Sagittarius energy with the temperance card but this is also a very feminine energy so whoever it is that you know took care of you whoever it is that fed you made uh, sure you did your homework whoever it was that you consider like that that parental figure there might be some um, emotional imbalances or even drinking issues um, within the household that you're dealing with. And this is something that you kind of accepted, you know, like, oh, it, it, that's just mom or that's just dad, you know, they drink or they're always a little bit somber or they're always a little bit depressed or they're always making bad decisions. And you accepted it as that's just what it was. It was easy to easier to accept growing up. And for the past few months, I feel like this has been an ongoing issue where things were kind of swept under the rug out of respect for the relationship that you have with them and as well out of the respect for the fact that, you know, they, they raised you. I feel like you went along with it, you accepted it and you never questioned it. And you might have, <clears throat> you might have kind of like turned your back to the fact that this is a problem. It needs to be changed. And I also feel like you never call them out on it because, you know, I, I feel like cancers, if there is a problem, it's really, really important to nip it in the bud, okay? Because I feel like you can put up with a lot, you let a lot of things slide. And then I feel like it's not like a, something that you're doing consciously. I feel that, you know, you don't want to hurt people. You don't want to say things too in a too blunt of a manner because you don't want to isolate the other person. You don't want to make them feel bad. But if it's an ongoing issue and you kind of accepted it, it just becomes your new normal. And then it kind of like stretches out, you know, that threshold of how much you can take, of how much before something becomes a problem. And I've seen this, I've felt this with you continuously when I do readings for you. And so it's really, really important for us to not sweep things under the rug, to really hash things out if there's a problem, to really try to arrive at a solution, to really, you know, kind of like um, be a little bit more proactive when it comes to, you know, not letting somebody make their problem your problem, okay? Drawing clear boundaries, I feel, and being very, very clear about what your limit is and what you will or will not accept. So I did the reading for Sagittarius, I believe, and I feel like the, the, the energy is very similar. But with Sagittarius too, um, they, they procrastinate. Sagittarius are major, major procrastinators because, you know, they're, they're very, very lucky in general. So they feel like, oh, if I don't do it tomorrow, it's not the end of the world. But I feel like with you, you're, you're just like, okay, this is my limit. And then somebody would kind of like bring you very, very close to that, to that limit. And you're afraid they're so close. The limit is already there. So you back up a little bit, you extend your limit just a little bit to cater to that other person. So, Moving forward, what I do feel is there are a lot of things here, finances that needs to be sorted out. And I feel like, you know, some of you are doing great. And then others of you, it's like not really making a move, not really planning for the future, uh, enjoying the moment now without kind of like 
future planning or even having a strategy as to, you know, three, four years from now, where am I going to be? What am I going to do? Am I going to be bouncing around from job to job? Or am I going to be in a place where I can, you know, be happy? Um, you do want a lot of success because for you, finances and, you know, reputation and professional prestige, it means a lot. And you might be in an environment where, you know, with um, the people around you, they don't really value these things. And then their value becomes your new normal. And you're just like, um, forget my dreams, forget my goals and my aspirations. I'm just going to coast because people around me don't really care about these things. So if I want to blend in, then I'm just going to, you know, take it one day at a time live life to the fullest and not plan for the future and that is a huge mistake because I feel like the next three years the past three years things have been kind of topsy-turvy for many of you some of you have really worked hard but I feel like you might have compromised you know your values and things like that in as a result and then for others I still feel financial lack of financial planning lack of investing in yourself so that you can get yourself to a better position so that you can get yourself to a more stable or a more you know incremental i, I want to say advancement when it comes to your career okay so that is one area that i feel needs to be kind of sorted out and you need to do some long-term planning i do see people going back to school and, uh, you know, going back to school is never easy, especially if you have children in the picture, if you have other people that you need to take care of. And if you feel like I have to work because I have somebody that's dependent on me, that's very, very noble of you. But find a way to manage two things successfully. Try to find a way to, you know, possibly even doing night classes if you can okay because i feel like this way of doing is not really going to serve you well because emotionally you're not feeling hopeful and then financially it's very topsy-turvy i do see opportunities for you uh working um and i do feel like it might take you away from your geographical location this is a card greatly about travel about thinking about voyages thinking about a change in uh, geographical location, a change in housing environment. It's been contemplated, but I feel like you have so much at stake. There might be family members, support system, friends in the present environment, and you don't feel like it's realistic for you to go somewhere else and start over. So we have a lot of travel energies here with the Two of Swords, the Two of Pentacles too, shifting between two locations. And also the temperance card, which rules Sagittarius, and they are notorious for, for travel and traveling very light. So there's major things coming into the picture for you. A move, I feel, is also very imminent. You're still thinking about it. You're not budging. You're not making a move. And I feel like you're you're not sure this is going to pan out, okay? Um cancers things will work out set some plan in motions first okay set some things in motion you don't have to say yes to everything but set some things in motions that way you have some options when you need it okay um i feel like for those of you who have children there might have been a falling out between you know um the 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 children's mother the children's father and you're at a point right now where you are collaborating or at least cooperating with each other in a very cordial manner it could be on the on the surface it could be you know you're kind of like um, biting your tongue but either way I feel like there's harmony here when it comes to co-parenting when it comes to like uh, trying to make nice just so that you can maintain that harmony for the child which is also very very honorable of you